When she was working, it was just noticed that she had a few uh, visual deficits. Pepsi, the black Labrador, is having a post-operation checkup. We quickly identified the, the cataracts present in both eyes and she went for surgery. Lieutenant Henry Mosey is one of the new veterinary officers here. One year qualified, now beginning a career in military animal medicine. And actually, looking really good. It seems like we, we've got to the bottom of that, we've resolved that, and Pepsi is now able to return to work um, and start going back to courses and, and ultimately doing her job. For me personally, it was definitely about making a difference. Um, a, a, a job on uh, Civvy Street uh, just wouldn't really have satisfied myself. I need to know that uh, the patients I'm dealing with are really making a difference on the international stage, um, and it, you know, it, it's no exaggeration to say that they're out there saving lives. And that really sums up the Defence Animal Training Regiment at Melton Mowbray and its staff of the Royal Army Veterinary Corps. They look after the animals who serve, aiming to give them the very best treatment and care and, where possible, get them back to duty. Colossus, a 21-year-old household cavalry horse standing 18 hands, has been ill and losing weight. Veterinary officer Major Carolyn Whiting has been trying to find out why. So this horse had a procedure yesterday to actually take some biopsies from his lungs. Because we went through the chest wall in order to get good biopsies, we actually ended up with a bit of air in the thoracic cavity, which is entirely expected. So we put a, put a chest strain in overnight, drain the air out, and then all I'm doing now is I'm just checking for a pneumothorax. And we can actually look on the screen. We've actually got lung moving nicely. There's a little bit of air in there, but very, very, very minimal. We'll check in on Colossus later. It's just another normal working day here at Melton Mowbray, but there is an air of excitement about the place, and that's because everybody's getting ready for a very special event. Isn't that right, Osprey? Yes. And these horses and their riders are rehearsing to be the stars of the show. To celebrate 100 years of the Royal Army Veterinary Corps, they'll march along with working dogs, their handlers and other staff through Melton Mowbray. But first, they've got to get that drill right. And the special indoor school is the perfect place to practice. Seeing this takes you right back to the time when the horse was vital to the army, for cavalry, for transport. During the First World War, millions of horses were used right across the war zone. At one point, 50% of all vets in the country were in the veterinary corps. So this year we're celebrating our centenary of getting the royal prefix to the corps. And that was in recognition of the, of the huge contribution that the veterinary corps made to the First World War. Melton Mowbray has been involved with military animals since 1906, when it was a remount farm. That's a place that sourced horses for the army and issued them out to frontline units. Today, all army horses pass through here. And they also source a lot of dogs, like Cookie, who's doing a spot of agility training with fellow Belgian Malinois, Tommy. And it's really important, it's the foundation from the start, so getting them to be obedient. Um, and the agility, you know, they, they need to be agile dogs to be able to do the, to do the job. Um, but, yeah, the obedience, so that they're focused on the handler, so when they're starting to work, um, while, while they're working, you always want the, the dog to be able to relate back to, to the handler and the obedience. I love training them, putting your own mark, and, mark on them, getting from them from a young age um, and just seeing them grow really and, and what you can kind of turn them into when you, from the start to when you're sending them out. So I just really enjoy that um, process. Army Hall will be the dog chase! The dogs have a range of specialisms. Lola, the Dutch Shepherd, is trained in protection. Whereas Lacey, the black Labrador, is learning to become an arms explosive search dog and really starting to get there despite the distractions of our camera. Lacey is just the latest in a long line to do this. More than 50 years ago, black labs were being trained for the same job and it's one the military community as a whole is delighted exists. They've proved their worth time and again, most recently in Afghanistan and Iraq, saving lives. I think there's a lot of pride and stuff which goes in to train the dogs in, the amount of time and effort that people put in to producing a good dog, um, and it really shows like when you go on deployments to Afghanistan and everything else. It's in the high 20s today, so the dog's time outside is limited. But spare a thought for the army farriers. It's over 40 Celsius by their forges, a unique place where personnel from the household cavalry units learn the trade, making the shoes for all the horses. 
including Colossus, who I'm pleased to report has recovered from his procedure. He'll be watched carefully and more tests might need to be done to get to the bottom of his condition. But like Pepsi the Labrador, Tommy, Lola and all the dogs and horses here, the care is the very best. Obviously the horse is not used in warfare anymore, but the dogs are used a lot more than a lot of people actually appreciate. And actually it's really important that the general public do know what we do and what purpose we have in protecting them. 100 years of the Royal Army Veterinary Corps doing their duty for our four-legged friends who serve.